happening my friends what's goody what's goody what's happening how's everybody doing today on this monday oh man it's been a long long weekend uh very long weekend man i uh hope you all are doing great thank you so much for tuning in to another great episode of the errington gavin podcast i am your guy errington gavin your homie your friend your bro the person you can always sit down and have a great conversation with uh monday wednesdays and fridays 10 a.m eastern standard time via podcast wherever you get your podcast uh at hey you can tune in around that time for a new episode and really just a new conversation as well as 1 p.m on youtube on our smooth club media youtube channel please uh subscribe i truly appreciate that um yeah man i hope you all are doing great as you know like i said very long weekend uh this past saturday this past Saturday, uh, I attended my alma mater, Chuan University. Kind of shout out, shout out to the the shirt I still I have on. I don't know if y'all can see from here. Yep. So uh, yeah, my wife and I we went to go visit our alma mater, really to catch a uh, a football game, and it was an event happening early during that day. But we were running a little bit behind because we were about a, a couple hours from uh, the university, and weather prohibit the full game it was a delay happening um i think they had about two or three delays and then that sky started getting gray started getting dark i'm like look it looks like it's about to cancel so also on that same day myself and my co-host uh Ciroc fox uh comedian Ciroc fox which you know we host a weekly radio show on wnsb hot 91.1 fm the soul of e8 called in your city and we were the red carpet host for a second time at the Emerge Awards Gala. The theme was all about the business. So shout out to my dear friend, uh, Tiffany Boyle, who is also the Commissioner of Revenue for the city of Newport News in Virginia in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, and she's also the founder of Emerge Magazine, which actually I have a copy, but it's somewhere around here. Uh, we were, yeah, we were their red carpet host for uh, the second year. So we were very excited. So Really, I had two events. So, in I was in Carolina with my wife and I. We were going to catch a little bit of the football game, and then boom, we were going to zip on to Newport News and basically, you know, start doing that event, the hosting, the whole nine yards, setting up all that good stuff. And yeah, that weather prohibited, man. And when I tell you, <laughs> your boy was scared. Your boy was terrified. I was. It started pouring down to the point where. Visibly, you could not see anything. You could not see a damn thing. I've driven through rainstorms, but this one was like over my head like crazy. Like I could not see anything. People in, in each lane, you know, start putting their hazardous lights on so we can all kind of just help guide each other through that process. And I felt like it was never going to end. I felt like it was never going to end. And I pulled over for just a, a little bit because the car in front of me had basically said no i'm not i'm not driving through this no more uh not happening so i said well look i i'm not going to be the leader of this line so let me kind of wait until a row of cars start coming in then i'll just catch up with them and that's what i did and eventually i got on uh the the freeway where it was much easier to uh to guide and to see a little bit better because i was driving back roads in this storm and i'm like man we about to get stuck in a hurricane is this a hurricane what is happening but by the grace of god we made it through we made it through end up uh, jetting all the way to Newport News and had this, you know, we we checked in. We we you know, we checked in the hotel cuz we're, we're old, man. We we I attend a lot of events um that are, you know, either closer to home or if it's a little if it's if it's close to an hour away, I'm like, look, we are not going to drive back. We are going to stay here because it's an evening event and we are exhausted. <laughs> After coming from a busy weekend anyway, uh cuz my, my wife and I, we are hard hard workers. So we attended this event, the Emerge Honors, more Emerge Awards, and the red carpet was awesome. Myself, Ciroc, we killed it as always, but we also had some correspondence. So we, we were excited this year, trying to jazz up the theme each and every year and jazz up the format. Uh, we kind of went with the Oscar theme. So, you know, myself, Ciroc, we were behind, uh, you know, a table commentating, and we also kind of uh, we had two other correspondents, uh, uh, Sh Miss Chantel, who's a celebrity makeup artist out of the Hampton Roads area, and she was making her debut on the red carpet, so we're very excited to have her, as well as my dear friend Rob Jay, 
uh, R&B superstar who is uh, coming off of a high because he had just opened up for Johnny Gill, the group So For Real, Genuine, and Keith Sweat at a, a concert that had, that went down in North, Norfolk, Virginia. So everybody was great. We had the stars out. We had a lot of our local and state officials coming to represent um, at this event. Um, another good friend of mine, Dr. Willard Maxwell, senior pastor of New Beach Grove Baptist Church. Uh, he's also the host of Bring That Smoke podcast, as well as, excuse me, he um the founder of uh, Maxwell Realty. So very, very awesome per- uh, person. A lot of great people just uh, came to attend this awesome event. Um, it's all about black excellence and all about the business. And events like those is what we continue to need, especially in the culture, uh, uh, because we have to continue to, you know, praise and motivate and keep that keep that momentum going when it comes to you know young entrepreneurs uh well young or old uh black white hispanic but minority uh you know especially we have to continue to praise that and continue to push that narrative so uh an an amazing event football games occurred also we had uh one game that i was really tuned in the whole time was a colorado university colorado coat head coached by Deion sanders nfl hall of famer who shocked the world after beating uh, Texas Christian University, a ranked school. And this, I think this game they played against Nebraska, and they won. And it was just, I mean, they're, right now they're undefeated, and this couldn't continue. It continues to be a epic sports story, like one of the best sports stories ever because seeing what he did in his NFL career, also he played, I believe seven or eight years in the major leagues. So a two professional sport athlete, then going on to being successful as a sports analyst, then turning around, becoming a successful coach in the HBCU side, taking a, a program from the bottom and turning to a, a championship winning program. And now going to a big, a uh, 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 power five, I believe school. And can, you know, as of right now he's undefeated. Two wins. Hey, we'll see what goes. Um, also, football. Football was it was based. The start of the regular season was really last uh, Thursday when KC had played the Detroit Lions, which they lost by one point. Come on now, lost by one point. And it was such an amazing game because a lot of people, for one, you can't go to Kansas City Chiefs Stadium and think you're coming out there victorious. Hell no. They're they're two-time winning Super Bowl champion franchise, well, at least under Andy Reid. You got Pat Mahomes. You got Travis Kelsey. Now, Travis Kelsey was out. They also lost. Uh, uh, I think this is the second season they uh, didn't have um, Tyreek Hill because, you know, he, he left and went to play with them. He's now uh, wide out for the Miami Dolphins. So missing some key pieces. And then on top of that, uh, one of their defensive ends, I believe his name is uh, Chris Jones. He's holding out on a, you know, on a contract extension because he's waiting to get paid. Okay. So he also was not playing in that game. So uh, again, not, you know, not saying that regardless uh, and taking away from the credibility of what Detroit did, but it was an amazing game. They, they played hard. They have a great squad. Um, Great momentum, but again, they they won that game. And then this past Sunday, you had the start of the regular season as well with more games. My Colts came up short. Like always, I'm telling you, none of my sports teams are fourth quarter teams. I tell you, they lost. They the last time I saw the score was it was like 21, I think 14. I'm like, okay, come on, come on, Indy. You got to keep that momentum going. Keep keep that lead. We played Jacksonville rivalry rivalry uh, squad. We I think we're in the same conference. Excuse me, same division as well. But uh, we lost. We lost, I believe, like 31 to 21. Um, but also shout out to the Washington Commanders because they're under new ownership now. One of those known names uh, in NBA Hall of Famer and uh, entrepreneur, successful businessman. Magic Johnson is a part of those uh, those individuals in that ownership group who is now the new owners of the Washington Commanders. They played the Arizona Cardinals won 20 to 16. And it was an amazing game, sold out uh, crowd that they played for. And it was just awesome. This is what Washington needs. 
Okay, now I'm a Virginia kid, and really Washington is like our next our professional football team because we really don't have a pro football team in the Virginia area. But it's a we built we breed a lot of professional athletes uh, out of the area, and the Washington Commanders is Virginia squad. So shout out to the Washington Commanders for that victory. Uh, let's see, let's see any other known games. Uh, well, okay, I'll, I'll speak about this for a short second. So the Las Vegas Raiders. They end up beating by one. It was 17 to 16, uh, Denver Broncos. Now, if you're not uh, aware of the new changes in the Denver Broncos organization, they now have a new head coach uh, in uh, Sean Payton. Now, Sean Payton was the former head coach for the New Orleans Saints, uh, who was he was there for many, many, many years. He won a, won a Super Bowl with them uh, under Drew Brees, and when they beat you know, my Colts, but I try to forget about that Super Bowl. But you know they. He was a, a great coach, and he eventually left coaching, well, at least left New Orleans, went on to, you know, being a sports uh, commentator and for a short period, but he was doing great at it. And all of a sudden, he takes a job uh, to coach Denver. And the first thing that I think as, like, the new head coach in town, he acknowledged which a lot of uh, sports commentators and everybody out there speaking about his comments he made towards his quarterback, uh, Russell Wilson, about you know stop effing kissing babies and you know acting like you're running for a public office and you know basically do what you're supposed to do help you know you run, be the captain of this squad help lead the squad because it came after a I mean Denver was awful last season I believe they might have had like three wins I could be wrong but they were coming from off of an awful season probably Russell Wilson's worst season ever as a starting quarterback and it just it, he he looked. Ah, now don't get me wrong. You're with a new a new environment. You're in a new environment. You go from Seattle, Washington to Denver, Colorado, up in the mountains. You are a Super Bowl winning squad. You have your pieces there. You have the, you know, the home crowd advantage, things like that. And you're trying to get used to like being the new kid in town. And so your first year is always the toughest year because you have a lot to uh uh you have a lot to prove that first year. Especially with Denver. Denver has been rocky. So, uh, yeah, they lost. So let's see what Sean is going to continue to talk about until next, you know, throughout this week. Uh, but, you know, he wasn't happy about that. And he's always been kind of like that Bill Parcells, kind of like hard nose, like, you know, hey, stop being a celebrity, be a, uh, be a football player, be a, um, be a, uh, a, a leader for this organization, for this squad, and help guide us to the promised land. Now, it's so hard for Russell Wilson because he is the husband of a celebrity. I'm talking about Sierra. Singer, you know, all-around entertainer, host, dancer. Uh, it's tough for Russell not to be in that limelight as a, you know, celebrity because he married a celebrity. They are like one of the power couple, power celebrity couples in Hollywood. Now, for me, I don't see him acting or or acting like a, a a celebrity or acting like he's you know kissing babies trying to run for office I, I don't I don't see at the end of the day what the the thing I disagree with Sean Payton is the fact that he forgets his players are are individual they have their own brands individually each player is their own brand they have their own business they have their own again brand I keep on using the word brand to build to promote so to say, hey, stop kissing babies, acting like you're running for office, I would say, coach, you need to mind your business because guess what? When I come here on this field, that's not what I do. When I come, when I come to this uh, practice facility, I do my job here. Okay, I've always done my job here. Now, when I leave this organ, when I leave uh, this facility and I go home or go wherever, now I'm Russell Wilson, the brand. Okay, so if my brand consisted of me kissing a few babies, acting like I run for office, then that's that. But you shouldn't have an issue with that, okay? Is I I mean it was it was really it was kind of a jab saying no no wonder you lost so much last season because you keep on acting, you know, acting out off the field. No. He's doing the right thing. He to me he's one of the most class act professional athletes in sports in in general, right? He's very vocal about his faith. He's very vocal about giving back. He, he, you know, he, yes, he's the face of uh, a lot of um, uh, different companies. 
uh him and his wife combined are doing great things i believe they're like part owners of a a, a sports franchise out in seattle so he's doing um, amazing things so i just wanted to bring that up because i you know of course i always want to get your thoughts from you the people my friends the listener the viewer uh please do me a favor leave a comment on the uh on the youtube channel about your thoughts on russell wilson how he's going to be doing this season uh now that they have a new head coach is going to add uh, more of a drive more of a push is sean Pay- is sean payton that guy that can help bring a losing franchise to uh maybe a playoff contender right or is this is this russell wilson's like do or die moment in a sense because if they if they have a poor season what's that going to be for russell are they going to try and look for to trade him is should he start looking at retiring like what's up i want to hear your thoughts Leave a comment. Um, also, uh, uh, DM me at uh, Arrington Gavin or on our Smooth Club Media uh, IG page as well. I'm also on Threads, I think, at our Smooth Club Media. So many other platforms, many ways you can contact me. I truly appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, another convo I want to bring up. Today is, we are celebrating the 22nd year anniversary of 9-11. 9-11, uh, what had occurred uh, 22 years ago in New York City with the attack on the Twin Towers. Um, you had terrorist attacks that hijacked planes, running them, ramming them into uh, corporate buildings, uh, being one of the most horrific and saddest moments in our U.S. history. Uh, so for that, we continue to acknowledge and shine a light on the victims of the li- of the lives that were lost and their families. Um, I have strong ties with New York. My majority of my family on my mother's side, as well as my mother, are from New York. I still they I still consider them New Yorkers. New York is one of my all time favorite cities. I'm a diehard Knicks fan. Um, I'm always rooting for New York squads out there. So. Um, you know, I was a little guy when this occurred, but again, they reliving, reliving that moment, reliving the videos, right? They've made countless of different movies, documentaries about this. And, um, it's, it, it was, it was very, just an extremely sad moment. And, uh, you know, we have different speculations on things of how this happened, you know, what went down or, also, like, you know, in, in our current time, a lot of people are saying, hey, look, there might be there might be, you know, uh, something like that ever. Come. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah. it's just you you want to always, you know, the world we live in, y'all, is it's a it's a dangerous world. Uh, but we always have to continue to put, you know, put prayer to it, keep it positive, always hope for nothing but uh, the best and not negativity. So, um, again, I just want to acknowledge that because it is um, September 11th and I want to make sure i do my due diligence by acknowledging those lives lost and you know for those families and uh each year there's um events happening where you know you have you hear messages from um, our current president and a lot of local officials people that were there that during that moment uh so we will tune in to those um but yeah just wanted to just wanted to acknowledge acknowledge that um man i mean 22 years 22 years 22 years um and it was you know not just in new york city it was also in arlington county virginia and stony creek township pennsylvania this all occurred september 11th 2001 between the times of let's see wow yeah, early morning thing. I remember watching the, the the film about it, and it was just uh, it was just crazy. It was just it was crazy, and you know, in not really interesting fact is is an awful fact, but um, one thing that they always, you know, one thing that they always acknowledge is the fact that this was a this was a day where. You know, it, everybody was caught off guard, and it it didn't just affect the the lives in that building. It affected everybody 
around the city. I mean, you're talking about buildings collapsing. So much smoke, soot that was surrounding the the city at that time. I mean, this was really, really I, for those who wasn't alive during that period. I'm just trying to really give you that image of fact that a plane, two planes that crashed into a a corporate building, like just you know, I for for those who don't you know really don't think too. Uh, lightly on it like i'm really you have to always um you know for one give your hats off to our first responders that went out to help those um a lot of first responders lives were lost uh doing uh their their job and you know protecting and serving so um again just wanted to acknowledge that today is the 22nd year anniversary of 9 11 uh so again thoughts and prayers to the families victims Anybody that had uh, anything to do uh, with that or lives lost or any affected with that, um, you know, my heart goes to you. Uh, guys, we're going to head to a quick commercial break. But when we come back, I will be discussing a little more when it comes to uh, former cast members of that show, uh, that 70s show. They share their thoughts and give their reaction of the most recent verdict of their former cast member so again you're tuned into the Aaron gavin podcast i'm your guy Aaron gavin we'll be back after this quick commercial break order your beard care products with rugged evolution we're your local beard care line that supports the maintenance of your full mature beard our line includes conditioning shampoos moisturizers balms oils shaving lotions and exfoliating soaps these products moisturize, hydrate, nourish, and have all the natural ingredients for a healthy beard. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Don't you just love that commercial? You know I always got to shout out my, my amazing men's grooming line, Rugged Evolution Beard Care, all over 17 scented beard bombs and beard oils and all natural men's grooming line. Uh, for more information, yes, go to ruggedevo.com. Okay. Ruggedevo.com. Um, you can go to lo- many, you know, many other omni channel online retailer sites, Walmart, Amazon, Etsy. We buy black. Um, yeah, it's an amazing product. So I highly recommend. And you can also, we have a free app. You can download our free mobile app available for Android or iPhone users called rugged evo where you can kind of tune in to all of everything rugged you can shop from there we have monthly newsletters our socials we truly appreciate it so on the last episode i spoke about uh former cast member well actually not former but that 70s show star danny masterson danny masterson who played Hyde in that 70s show for eight years. Uh, he was sentenced to 30 years to life for the rapes of two women. And it has really kind of shooken up the Hollywood world because, again, you look at a man that comes from one of the most successful TV comedy uh, sitcom shows alive of you know of all time now i'm i'll be honest i was not a uh that 70s show fan i never really heard about it until much later on of like ashton kutcher was already very established and then they're like hey you ever heard that show you know that 70s show i'm like no not really and and never you know never tried to catch on to it but again i knew it was successful i knew it garnered a lot of stars like ashton kutcher uh danny masterson being one of them uh Mila Kunis, just to name a few. Uh each individual cast member in that became very successful on their own. Uh it, comparisons like the office, right? I mean, they became you know became very successful. But I bring up that conversation because recently Mila Kunis and her husband Ashton Kutcher uh wanted to apologize because they had basically spoke about their you know they were defending a person that they knew friendship wise for 25 years 25 years and 
you know, to my knowledge, I believe, of course, you know, you're always going to have your haters, but they were, you know, they were apologizing because they didn't want people to think that they were okay with the individual that is now going to jail for rape or like, you know, they're, you know, defending a rapist. And this uh, uh, article is reported by ABC, excuse me, NBC News and it's titled Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher say they're aware of the pain their letters defending Danny Masterson caused. Now, Kutcher said that they wrote the letters after Madison's Masterson's family asked them to characterize the person that they knew for 25 years. Now, they're posting their social and we support v- Mila Kunis words. We support victims. Uh. We support the victims of rape and of this case. Uh, to, to speak a little more, I want to get on to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so Kunis and Kutcher were among several actors from that 70s show who went to bat for Masterson before he was sentenced Thursday to 30 years to life in prison for sexually assaulting two women at his Hollywood Hills home tw- two decades ago. Now, Mila stated, we support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future, Kuna said uh, on her Instagram video along with her husband. Uh, in the letter submitted to court, Kunis and Kutcher described Masterson as an outstanding older brother figure, a dedicated and loyal husband, an excellent role model, a stark contrast to the predator who dragged and raped defenseless women that his victims labeled him as now guys i bring this up because remember i will on the last show i was talking about separating the two individuals the star from the actual person now for the fans of you know that 70s show i believe this is going to be pretty difficult for you to still be a huge fan you know Hyde might have been your favorite character on that show and now that he's going to be serving you know 30 years to life how do you how do you react how do you respond how does this is is the show going to be looked at differently right are the jokes going to be taken differently now uh you know it's difficult for somebody in 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 defense of Ashen and Mila again for a person that you called your friend or a big brother for 25 years they should not be criticized for uh, sharing uh, or writing a letter in defense for him uh, prior to the sentence, because at the end of the day, they're they're get going based on their heart of the person that they knew. Look, we don't know. You never know behind closed doors. You never know behind closed doors. And that's it. That's a that's very real. OK, that's very real. You could know somebody for 50 years. I mean, hell, there was, I can't remember the, uh, oh, man. Um, I think it was the BTK Strangler. or kill- There was a serial killer uh, who is, I mean, he's still serving life uh, to this day in prison. But he was, to the public, he was a devoted father. He was a loyal person to his community. He was uh, a an avid volunteer in his local church and his daughter was like he was my hero right until all of a sudden the truth comes out and he turned out to be a serial killer okay you 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 just you just never know y'all you just never know so again i bring this story up to to say for those who are criticizing Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher back off back off you you don't know the kind of position that they're in and again set aside from you know them trying to recover from this but this man's family is trying to recover every every they showed images of him you know leaving court attending court he was always side by side i'm talking about danny masterson he was always side by side with his wife uh who was in support of her husband now this man is a father he's a husband and you know for his family this is extremely extremely tough because at the end of the day he, I believe he's about 40 in his mid to late 40s. He's going to prison for 30 years to life. To life. This is this is a 
life changing thing that's occurring. Um, so it's very it's very hard to uh, to what's the word I'm looking for? It's very hard to just kind of like take away the you know that per you know the person that they knew and now coming to reality is like wow this is happening. So again, very tough and um, you know justice was served because these two ladies had this on their had this on them since for you know this happened two decades ago for 20 years they were living through seeing this man continue to get more and more successful and they were victims they were victims so hopefully i'm you know i'm hoping that they found justice with it i know it's always going to be tough because if they were permanently scarred something that will be scarred for them for the rest of their life but i hope that they you know continue to get the help that they need and the support system that they need or have um but i just wanted to uh just wanted to bring that up with y'all uh uh because again this is just you know especially for those that 70 show fans um yes extremely tough extremely tough uh lastly before i end this show man i wanted to shout out coco golf coco golf just won the 2023 u.s open and this is making her, I believe, the youngest person to win. And I could be wrong, but give me one second so I can get my notes ready. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's see here. Let's see here. And I believe Coco Golf is just, man, she is just 19 years old. Ugh. Boy, it must be great to be a young, successful celebrity. I'm pretty sure Cole, we all knew who Coco Golf was. She she was like became pro, I think, like at 13 or 14 years old, which still blows my mind. The fact, like, I remember when I was like 14 or 13 years old. Ask me, was I anywhere near close to being a professional athlete? <laughs> nope. You had it right. If that if that's the answer you were thinking, you were absolutely right, because I was nowhere near. Uh, close to uh, <laughs> becoming a professional athlete at 14. But uh, Coco Golf recently won her first major title uh, last Saturday, and it was awesome. It was history in the making. Um, she, you know, she had, you know, it was a star studded crowd. You had celebrities like, you know, Kevin Durant, Diane Keaton, Nicole Kidman, Spike Lee, just to name a few. Um, you know, they're calling her really the next uh, Williams sister. And I believe they're absolutely right because her energy, right? The crowd is always engaged with her. They're excited along with her. Whenever she makes a great play, they, you know, they're right there with her. She has her loving parents who are always in support with her. Great parents that raise an amazing, uh, amazing individual. Uh, yes, I'm reading it right here. It says she is the youngest American to win the U.S. Open since Serena Williams in 1999. And the first American to win a major title since Sophia Keenan at the Australian Open in 2020. So uh, she's also became the first woman to win the title in New York after dropping the first set in three matches during her title run since Williams also in 1999. So again, shout out to Coco Golf, man. Again, doing great things. Sports world newest star. And this is only just the beginning for her. And uh, I'm pretty sure because of Coco Golf, you're going to continue to see more and more uh, girls, you know, especially girls of color that are going to be more interested in in tennis and want to be the next Coco Golf. So uh, kudos, kudos and congrats to, to them. Uh, guys, I am going to close it on up. But again, I hope you all can enjoy your uh, Monday and stay safe out there and i will be back with you all wednesday speaking on some more uh, uh, uh trending news topics uh business tips you know a little bit of everything because this is where you know hey i speak on everyday topics so we're just gonna have a great time have a great conversation i always truly appreciate the support and you tuning into this podcast uh be sure again to tune in. New episodes drop every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via podcast. So, again, wherever you get your podcast from, tune in 
to the Arrington Gavin podcast. We are under the R Smooth Club uh, tab. So we are continue to grow our our smooth club media is continue to grow our content and platforms. We have a weekly radio show which airs every Sundays at 12 p.m. called In Your City, hosted by myself, my good friend, a uh, comedian Sirak Fox, and uh, it's on WNSB Hot 91.1 FM, the Soul of VA. If you are not in the Hampton Roads area, don't worry, you can still listen in live online at WNSB.org. Or you can download the free app, WSB app, uh, mobile app, so you can tune in live as well. Um, you can also tune in for re, uh, repeats of the show on our podcast platforms. And also tune in to the video version of this podcast on my YouTube channel. New episodes will drop uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. So till next time, guys, y'all be easy. I will... Uh, do some work because that's what I do. The workflow never stops <laughs> as a business owner. And I am uh, kind of hungry too. I think I'm going to grab something to eat. I'm a little hungry. I'm going to have a little late lunch. But y'all be easy. Tune in next time.